All right, so um, this is our first little lecture. Here, um, what I'm going to do is do some review from some stuff from um, functions in modeling and college algebra that are going to come into play um, rather quickly for us here. So what we want to do here first is we want to look at classifying functions as even, odd, or neither. Now the naming for this came from the root of polynomial functions. So I will look at the kind of base even function. And this is f of x equals x squared. And what happens is if there's some x value that's equal to a and we look at negative a they end up having the same y value here they lie on the same point and this creates a symmetry across the y-axis and so we can say an even function shows this symmetry by if I put in the negative value of x into the function I get back the function as I had it and so if we use this as our example if I put in negative x everywhere I see x I want to replace it with negative x and that's the same as negative x times negative x a negative times a negative is positive, so that's x squared. And so this is an even function, and it got its name from how that power interacts. Now, not all even functions look like this with power. There are different ways um, that, you, that you can see even functions, and we'll see that as we explore some things here. So an odd function, well, again, a good example of it, and I'll draw the function in purple here, is to look at the function x cubed. Sorry for my crooked curve here. And so I'll call that one f of x. Whoops, I don't want to use blue. Uh, it's a good color to we'll use a orange f of x equals x cubed. So that's the purple line here. And what happens is if I look up on a here, I get some c value. And if I look at negative a down here, it's at negative c. And so we can think about it as if I fold this down to this half and then fold it over here, these two curves are the same. Think of it like folding a piece of paper. If I have this on a piece of paper and I fold it about the x-axis, that'll come down here like this, and then I fold it about the y-axis, it'll overlie this. Um, or we can say it's symmetric to the origin. And if I use this function over here as an example, um, an odd function has the definition that it will give me the opposite value of what the regular x has. So if I put f of negative x in for ne x cubed, that's the same as a negative times a negative times a negative, or negative x cubed, which is the opposite of that. And so even in odd functions, can be classified uh, that way. But not all functions are even or odd, and that's where we get neither. If neither of these things come tr are true, um, then it is neither. And so our function that we have been looking at, any exponential, some base to a power, if I do the test here, I get b to the negative x. 
Well, that's not the same as this, nor is it the negative of this. So our base exponential is neither. That doesn't mean um, we can have um, things that are even and odd. In fact, in your homework, you'll look at the cinch and the cosh functions, which are defined as e to the x plus, uh, minus e to the negative x divided by 2. And this is e to the x plus e to the negative x divided by 2. And these can have even or odd characteristics. And so if you use th these tests, you'll be, you'll be able to see which is which and what that means. But even and odd are important definitions that will come up. Uh, and we'll look at a lot of functions from that idea. It can help us sort things out. And in calculus, even and odd can help you simplify um, the steps you have to take because of that symmetry. Another thing from functions and modeling in college algebra is the inverse of a function. So if I have some function f of x, and it's equal to something here, if the function survives, let me, a horizontal line test, so if I make a horizontal line, exponential on it, and I only touch the function once, it can be invertible. And so there is some function, which we put a little negative one up above, that's called the inverse. And inverses go back and forth. A good example of an inverse is if we chop the x squared function up, This fails the horizontal line test. But if I decide only to look at the things from 0 to infinity, I won't look at this part, I have a nice function here. So the inverse mirrors across the line y equals x. Let me get the line y equals x here properly. And so the inverse comes up and out like this. And it has a mirror of this segment of it. And the inverse for this is the positive values of the square root of x. And what happens is we switch the domain and range. And this answer, so the domain of f equals x squared taking just the positive x's is 0 to infinity. And so its range ends up going from, well, it starts at 0, goes out to infinity also. And we swap those over here. And so this domain goes from 0 to infinity. And this range goes from 0 to infinity. But the values swap around. So if I put in 2 here, I get 4. If I put in 4 here, I get 2. And that works for every value in here. It's a way of undoing functions. And a really nice thing comes out of this. If I put an inverse into a function, it gives me the variable. So let's look at an, uh, an example of that, and I'll, I'll show you how um, we can create an inverse. And this is going to be very important for us for developing tools to work with exponentials. So we need the idea of an inverse. On the same thing, if I put into the inverse the original function, the variable comes out on its own. The independent variable comes out. So let's say I have some function that is a line. So we'll have a line with slope 1 half x plus 3. To find its inverse, I write this as y equals 1 half x plus 3. And now I'm going to swap my variables. So I'll say x equals 1 half y plus 3. Now I'm going to solve for y. So x minus 3 equals 1 half y. And y equals 2 times x minus 3. And so 
this is my inverse. And I can check it. I can put this in place of x in here. I could drop the inverse in. So I'm going to do that here. Equals 1 half times 2 times x minus 3 plus 3. So I'm dropping this in. Well, the 1 half times the 2 cancels, right? They become 1. So I get x minus 3 plus 3 or x, so I know it's an inverse. And I can do the same thing here. I can take the original function and put it into the inverse. So f minus one of f of x, I have the inverse, but now where I see x, I'm gonna put one half x plus three, and then I still have this minus three here. And so minus three and plus three cancel, and 2 times 1 half, I get x. And inverses are a great way of, of undoing the operation of a function. And one of the things we're going to explore with exponentials is what their inverses are, because that will help us get things out of the powers. And so this is just a little review to get us ready for the things we're going to see as this lecture proceeds.